We're back. A Dinosaur Story is an animated film that was released in 1993 and has a total of four directors, as well as executive producer Steven Spielberg, who you may know from his popular film hits such as Jewel and Something Evil. The film features four dinosaurs who are brought back to the present day as they try to navigate their way through New York City to get to the Museum of Natural History. We're going to the Museum of Natural History. The film is actually based off a book by Hudson Talbot, released in 1987. But I think the main reason for this film's release was to capitalize on the recent dinosaur popularity thanks to Jurassic Park, which was released earlier the same year. And yeah, as a child, I was well aboard this dinosaur hype train, as I was an absolute dino nerd when growing up, and would watch anything featuring dinosaurs in it. Jurassic Park, oh, yeah. Walking with Dinosaurs, oh, yeah. The Land Before Time, oh, yeah. The Lost World, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jurassic Park 3, and even more obscure shows such as the incredibly 90s TV show Extreme Dinosaurs. I would watch anything with dinosaurs. Yet this film, I have actually never seen before. Yet I did know of its existence because I had seen it on various VHS trailers. And I think that's because I looked at the trailer and thought, it just looked a bit goofy. And apparently I wasn't the only one, as the film was an absolute box office failure, grossing only $9.3 million worldwide. But it has been requested a fair few times from you guys, and I've been told it does contain some pretty dark and scary moments for its child-friendly U rating. And there will be nothing unsuitable for children. So I'm willing to give it a shot. Will it be another underrated box office gem? Or will it put the stink in extinct? Let's dig it up and take a look. Showtime. But first, I would like to thank this video's sponsor, Honeygain. Honeygain is an app that uses your internet connection and in return, will pay you for the privilege. Your connection is used by businesses to gather public web data for things such as price comparisons in different regions or helping businesses identify fraud websites. Now, being honest, it won't generate enough revenue to cover your living costs, but you can earn enough to treat yourself with some smaller purchases such as Netflix, Spotify, or <laughs> YouTube Premium, <laughs> good one. And don't worry about your data being collected, as the app does not ask for access to your device's storage, nor does it collect personal data. But you do need to keep the app running in the background in order to generate revenue. If you'd like to sign up to Honeygain, you can also use my promo code, Steve5, to collect a gift of $5, or click the link in the description below. That's r.honeygain.money forward slash Steve5. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Now back to the review. The film opens up in Central Park, New York City, as we join a family of birds where the youngest bird, Buster, is getting picked on by his siblings. He's teased for being a mama's boy, and so he decides to storm off and leave the nest. Um. Th this is the right film, isn't it? Being unable to fly, Buster falls from the tree and meets a dinosaur playing golf. Dad, aren't you a dinosaur? Then what the heck are you doing playing golf? This is a question that will never get answered in the entire film. Buster tells the dinosaur, named Rex, that he wants to run away to the circus. So Rex begins telling him a story of another guy that he knew who wanted to do the exact same thing. We get a flashback to prehistoric times where we see a much more awesome looking Rex as he's chasing down a small creature. His hunt is interrupted by a flying saucer, which captures Rex and feeds him some brain grain, which not only increases his intelligence, but also turns him friendly and gives him the ability to talk. Lunch? What's lunch? Rex is then introduced to some other dinosaurs who have also had the same treatment. Alright, so this is where the film starts to go downhill for me. I'm not really a fan of how they've redesigned the dinosaurs to look more cutesy after eating the brain grain, but there are also a lot of inaccuracies here. What is wrong with the dinosaurs here? Dinosaurs didn't look like this. Dinosaurs didn't look like this. First thing, as a certified dino nerd, 
It really bothers me that Rex is indeed meant to be a Tyrannosaurus, yet they've bothered to give him three fingers as opposed to the classic two. I mean, I get why they want to do this as it gives him more ability to interact with objects and perform hand gestures, but god it annoys me so much considering one of the iconic features of the Tyrannosaurus was its tiny little arms with two fingers. Ugh, this is exactly what they did to Chomper in the Land Before Time series, and it still bothers me to this day. Second thing, Triceratops were herbivores, so why is it sat here eating hot dogs? Did these people know anything about dinosaurs? These dinosaurs are inaccurate! Actually, you know what? I'm sensing a pattern here. First we had it in the Land Before Time where dinosaurs of different periods were living side by side, and then you had Jurassic Park where the Velociraptors were way too oversized. I'm coming to the conclusion, Spielberg just doesn't know his dinosaurs. That's what I call lunch. Lunch? That's what you used to call me. Yeah, I mean you totally murdered half my family right before my very eyes, but I guess it's cool. We're friends now. Rex, I feel such a fool, but I must say it, you are a rough and handsome fellow. And apparently some might be more than just friends. They meet a guy named Captain New Eyes, who reveals that he captured the dinosaurs in order to fill the wishes of children in the future. I've made a fortune out of my brain grain cereal, and now in my golden years I'm trying to give something back. I'm trying to make a few wishes come true. I mean sure, with all this technology he could resolve other ongoing issues like ending world hunger, getting rid of cancer, helping to stop all wars, but he's like, nah, dinosaurs will do. I wish I could see. A Tyrannosaurus Rex. Rex. Yeah, maybe then you can actually draw it properly. I wish I could see one of those flying dinosaurs. <laughs> Why, that's me. Uh, technically, pterosaurs weren't dinosaurs. If you want to see a flying dinosaur, look at a bird. I, 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 I could see a, an Apatosaurus. Golly, this is great. Okay, if I'm hearing that correctly, this guy is definitely not an Apatosaurus. In fact, it stated on the wiki that he is indeed a Parasaurolophus, which, yeah, still not looking quite right, but a lot closer. In fact, I've just rewatched this with some subtitles, and it actually says a Padasaurus, which again, is nothing like this guy. I'm guessing that this line was lifted from the original book, as that does indeed feature an Apatosaurus, and they just chucked it into the film without knowing any better. Speaking of things being chucked in without knowing any better, the captain tells the dinosaurs that they need to head to the Museum of Natural History in New York, and so he simply drops them from the ship, completely unattended, in a modern world that they know nothing about. Like, don't you think they might be in a little danger if any of the thousands of people saw them in the street? Has he not seen the Lost World? Can you at least send your little green guy down to escort them? Or maybe land in a rural part outside of the city and transport them in another way? Well, no, because the plot needs to happen. Upon their descent, the dinosaurs crash land on a raft being sailed by a kid named Louie. Who doesn't seem all that phased about meeting four talking dinosaurs? What are you guys anyway? Dinosaurs, actually. Dinosaurs, huh? Eh, I've seen worse on the subway every day. I sincerely apologize to all my American viewers for my appalling New York accent. Louis tells the dinosaurs that he's run away from home to go join the circus in Central Park, and with that being apparently en route to the Museum of Natural History, he decides to journey along with the dinosaurs through New York City. Things quickly go wrong, however, as Rex falls into the harbor. Rex! Rex! But thanks to some quick thinking, Louis is able to save him. I owe you one, Louis. These things happen. No, seriously, Louis, I owe you one. Anything you want. Anything. Also, it turns out there was a lady who was set to meet the dinosaurs as they landed, but she was running late and so missed them. Didn't foresee that one in your time machine, did you, Captain? I've missed them with my endless, shameless lateness. Oh well, we'll rendezvous. We'll rendezvous. Yeah, no big deal, just four large terrifying dinosaurs running amok around New York City with no clue of what's going on. What's the worst that could happen? Louis and the pterodactyls scout the city to figure out how to get the dinosaurs across New York, and decides that he could disguise them as robots in a conveniently universal themed parade. Along their scouting, they also meet a young girl named Cecilia. Hey babe, I'm Louis. 
that there's a friend of mine. I got Yeah, that tends to be the reaction I get from women too. Cecilia is feeling lonely as her parents are never around for her, as they both live busy lives. And so she decides to head off with Louis to join the circus, where she meets the other dinosaurs. Everybody. Wow, that was, uh, really weird. Uh, quick, let's cut to a musical number. Yeah, so of course being an animated film in the 90s means that we now have to get our obligatory musical song. Because, you know, that's what Disney is doing. Nothing wrong with the song itself. In fact, I'll even admit, it does seem a little catchy. But God, does it feel forced and out of place here. After the song is over, the people figure out that the dinosaurs are real. Real dinosaurs! Not sure what it was that gave them away, as everyone seemed fine with them singing and dancing. But whatever, the plot needs to happen. During the chaos, the kids become separated from the dinosaurs as they try to escape the police. Huh, can see where they got the idea now for Sonic Adventure 2. The kids stumble across the circus in Central Park, ran by Professor Screw Eyes, who was warned to the dinosaurs by Captain New Eyes as it's his evil brother. Was that your audience we passed coming here? Probably. Boogie Bunch! I appeal to a particular group. Me whenever I talk about my subscribers. The kids sign up to the circus, where they are now magically bound for life, and are turned into monkeys as part of a freak show. Yeah, who would have thought signing up to a dodgy magic contract would have such unforeseen consequences? The dinosaurs show up just after, and offer to trade themselves into the circus, under the condition that the kids are let go. We were friends for a minute, yeah, quite literally a minute. I don't know why the film is bigging this up as such a tearful sacrifice for the dinosaurs to make, when they've had barely any screen time with the kids at all. Professor Screw Eyes feeds the dinosaurs a brain drain pill, which turns them back into their primitive forms, where he will use them as his star attraction to scare people. Oh god, they just look so much cooler like this. See, why couldn't they maintain these designs throughout the entirety of the film? You can still have them slightly anthropomorphized, with more human-like facial expressions, but still keep them looking like dinosaurs. Pretty much like what the Land Before Time series did. Also, shouldn't they be killing each other right now? Professor Screw Eyes manages to hypnotize Rex under his control, but due to a mishatch, soon loses control and is about to get eaten. That is until Louis steps in with a compelling speech. Don't ruin everything because you're mad or, or scared or something. It can't be all about that. You, you are the original top guy. Rex, you've got nothing to prove. You're a giant. Don't be a stiff. Don't be just another slob spoiling the way the world can be. Please put him down. Okay, great speech and all, but who is it for? Why is Louis telling Rex that he doesn't need to act like the tough guy in order to prove himself? Rex, ever since his transformation, has been a humble, gentle giant with no hint of a tough guy persona whatsoever. And the only reason he's acting vicious right now is because he's a Tyrannosaurus Rex that's hungry. Oh, but Steve, the speech wasn't necessarily for Rex. It was more about Louis reflecting upon himself, recognizing his character flaws and therefore completing his character arc. An excellent point, dear viewer, but we'll get back to that in a tick. It turns out that the speech somehow did work on Rex, and this somehow reverts him back to his friendly self, despite him having no way of understanding Louis and anything he said. I, I know you can't understand me, but you got it. But then apparently for the rest of the dinosaurs, they don't even need a speech. All they need is a hug, and they're brought back. Okay, so back to Louis and his arc. Don't do that! You kiss me and everything. It's not manly, just that's what it is. He hasn't learned a bloody thing. No, I act like I'm the original tough guy, but that's because I'm scared too. So who was that speech for? He goes on talking about how you shouldn't be the tough guy and shouldn't be hiding what you're feelings, and then in the very next scene after giving that speech, he acts like the tough guy and starts hiding away his feelings. Anyway, Captain New Eyes shows up to free the dinosaurs. Apparently he doesn't care about his ship being visible in New York City anymore. 
and then E.T. managed to phone home and was rescued by his own kind. Uh, wrong film, Mr. Spielberg. What? Oh, fuck, I don't care. Just let me direct Schindler's list already. Brother, I should have known you were behind this. You've literally known this from the very start. Warn by whom? Your brother. So that's how you got here and why you can talk. I heard your wish on my wish radio. Very good. Let no bad happen. Couldn't agree more. Yet you willingly dropped four dinosaurs into New York City. The way you look at me, it makes me want to, um, lay an egg. <laughs> what the fuck? They offer Professor Screw Eyes to come with them and renounce his old ways, but he refuses and so gets left behind. Brother, brother, wait. I get very frightened myself. A crow's good. <gasps> Well, that suddenly got incredibly dark, didn't it? Honest to God, Professor Screw Eyes here was a really underutilized character, but I'll get to that in more detail in a tick. The dinosaurs end up getting to the museum, where they stay as an exhibition for all the children. Guess everyone forgot about them terrorizing the city earlier, where the film ends and the credits roll. And that's the way it is. As the first ones came out of the ocean and rocked! Oh, wait, no, it doesn't. Remember? We still had that opening conflict with the young bird. We get told by Rex that all of the film's loose ends managed to get neatly tied up. Yeah, that major conflict of Cecilia's parents never having time for her? That magically got resolved off screen. This convoluted story somehow teaches the young bird his lesson, where he returns back to his nest. And we still never get an answer as to why Rex is out playing golf if he and the other dinosaurs are meant to be secretly hiding in the museum. Where the film actually ends and the credits roll. And that's We're Back A Dinosaur Story. Is it an underrated box office gem that I regret missing out on? No. And here's my reasons. I think the biggest thing that holds this film back is the characters. There is just no character personality or development in this film. Louis, who is meant to be our main protagonist, is boring. The film sets up some interesting quirks for him, like how he has this cool toasty maker on his raft, and how he's quickly able to operate the digger to rescue Rex from the harbour. But then this is never utilised again, and for the rest of the film he turns into a wannabe tough guy dumbass who signs him up to a blatantly evil circus. And this is all the more unsympathetic when we discover his only reason for running away from home was that he didn't like his parents being too cuddly with him. You should add my mother slobbering kisses all over me. In public! Like, oh no, you poor thing. Your parents love you. But then we have Cecilia, who on the opposite end of the scale has it where her parents completely ignore her and often leave her by herself. Now that's more of a sympathetic backstory. And you'd think that this would create conflict between the two kids as they're running away for complete opposite reasons, thereby causing them to eventually see it from the other's perspective. But no. Instead, Cecilia's character is downgraded to simply following Louis around, as for whatever reason she's madly in love with him, right to the point that she's willing to blindly sign herself up for what is obviously a dodgy circus. Oh, but what about the stars of the film? You know, the dinosaurs, their story. Well, they have no distinct personalities or arcs to learn. They eat the brain grain cereal, become overly cheery and kind, and that's the way they stay for the entire film. Like, couldn't you have made their personalities a bit more distinct to their creature? Like Dweeb, being a hunted herbivore, is constantly nervous and cautious about things. The pterodactyl being a snob as she looks down on the land creatures below and Rex and the Triceratops constantly bickering at each other, symbolizing their rivalry in the animal kingdom. The film even hints at this when Louis is telling Rex that he doesn't always have to act like the tough guy. Well, why don't we have him actually act like a tough guy? But I think the biggest wasted character arc in this film has to be the villain, Professor Screw Eyes. There's so much hint thrown in this film that he's a much more complex character than what's given off, yet it is never explored. From what we gather is that he wasn't always an awful person, but had a traumatic incident which led him to losing his left eye. 
and caused him to suffer from PTSD, which sent him off into the deep end. He was driven mad by the loss of his eye long ago. That guy's crazy. No, not really crazy. He's just a little bit off in his... Look, after breakfast... You... And now as a coping mechanism, he uses fear on other people to distract him from his own personal issues. The creature that scares you all does what I say. I am the master of fear, and I am not afraid! I was so certain that this character was going to be set up for a redemption. As he hears the overwhelming cheers from the crowd when they celebrate the friendship over the fear. Maybe that would make him realize that fear is not a good thing and would turn him back on his ways? Nope. Instead, he just refuses, goes back, and tragically gets eaten by crows? There is actually a deleted scene which shows Professor Screw Eyes explaining how he's lost his eye, in that when he was a child, a berry fell into it, in which a crow then flew down and pecked it out. I had done nothing to earn such a fate, so ever since I have known that the world made no sense and have acted accordingly. What the fuck? This gives the character so much more depth and sympathy and explains why he has the crows around him at all times. I have a peculiar fear of crows, so I keep them by me. I am afraid of them, but I am their master. I am the master of my fear. <laughs> But the studio thought that this would have been too dark for the little kids, and so had it cut out. Such a waste. It's like the film had all the blueprints there, all the tools and equipment at the ready, and they just couldn't put it all together. The character development isn't helped by the fact that the pacing is also very rushed. The film is just over an hour long, and it definitely feels like that. It's like the entire middle portion of the film was axed out, as no sooner had the dinosaurs met the kids and started singing in the parade, we immediately cut to the final act where the kids discover the circus and the dinosaurs are coming to rescue them. They talk as though they've become the best of friends, when in reality they've barely shared any screen time together. Apparently behind the scenes there was a lot of studio interference which led to a lot of alterations being made to the initial idea. Actor John Makovich, who originally set out to play Professor Screw Eyes, dropped out of the production because of disagreements with the studio and directors, arguing the potential of the script was never fully utilized, stating in a later interview, Good ideas go to die in Hollywood. I worked on an animated movie about dinosaurs in New York once. It was completely bureauc bureaucratized? Bureaucratized. It was completely bureaucratized. They took something that had art in it, and pulled it in the laps of people that only cared about the bottom line. And look what happened. But it's not all negative. As for a film that is pretty bad, the animation is actually really good. The backgrounds look great, the characters are detailed with smooth movement, and get given a lot of facial expressions. It's just a shame that this beautiful animation is let down by the goofy dinosaur designs. Because in the scenes where we get the dinosaurs in their normal primitive forms, they look absolutely awesome. And there's some really nice work done with the camera movement and lighting too. The music is also pretty up there, and does its best to make you feel emotion, even though there's not too much reason to do so. And I'll admit, the musical number in the middle of the film is actually a catchy tune. It just doesn't feel like it fits in. Overall, can I recommend this film? No, not really. It's not offensively bad, there's just not much to get out of it. Even if you're a big fan of dinosaurs like me, there are much better alternatives out there. As here, the dinosaurs just don't feel like dinosaurs. Maybe that's why I still haven't been able to bring myself to watch films like The Good Dinosaur. They just look too goofy and behave too human-like. It's almost like the 1998 Godzilla film, where they weren't interested in the monster, just its marketability. And it feels the same here. They weren't interested in the dinosaurs, just trying to capitalize off them. Perhaps some younger audiences will enjoy it enough, but as for general, I'd say skip. Maybe for this one they shouldn't have come back, and rather, stayed in the past.